on a peninsula parallel to Roswell Eldridge's beloved Great Neck. Just across the Manhasset Bay, some of the richest people in America lived in a little hamlet called Sands Point. F. Scott Fitzgerald immortalized both neighborhoods in the Great Gatsby. Great Neck was East Egg, where Gatsby threw the wild parties with the champagne and the dancing and the weeping chorus girls. Sands Point was West Egg, where Daisy Buchanan lived in a Georgian colonial mansion whose lawn starred at the beach and ran towards the front door for a quarter of a mile. Fitzgerald himself lived in Great Neck, attended the real-life parties, and thought that he could see in his hosts a vision of his future self once his play The Vegetable took off and he became a millionaire too. It didn't work out. On opening night, the audience walked out during the second act, and Fitzgerald struggled for money for the rest of his life. But before all that, Sands Point was just an odd little neighborhood in a place called Port Washington. The people who lived in Port Washington thought they pretty much lived in paradise, the most beautifully peaceful place that ever existed within 34 minutes of Midtown Manhattan. And the people of Sands Point would have agreed, to an extent. They loved the beaches and the woods, the hunting and the yachting, but they did not love their neighbors. And they would not hesitate to draw a clear line between themselves and the people they considered their social inferiors, the people who lived at the bottom half of their West Egg Peninsula. So as soon as the incorporation law changed in 1910, the people of Sands Point jumped at the opportunity to make their wealthy enclave an official village. But Port Washington wasn't the same kind of place as sleepy old Great Neck. They knew what they stood to lose if the millionaires left the hamlet. So when the millionaires of Sands Point incorporated their village, the people of Port Washington fought back. 